I would like to call the March 20th, 2024 regular board meeting of the Fenton Community High School District 100 board to order. May I have a roll call? Figueroa? Here. Goodrich? Here. Cade? Here. Kovac? Present. Lewis? Here. Radzinski? Here. Rago? Here. We have a quorum. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to take a moment to address the importance of maintaining a professional atmosphere during our public comment session and the rest of tonight's meeting. I want to thank all members of our community for their interest and engagement in the affairs of the school district. Your input is welcome and appreciated as we work together to provide the best education for our students. It is crucial that we conduct ourselves with decorum and respect at all times, while we welcome diverse perspectives and opinions. It is essential that we express them in a manner that is respectful and constructive. Personal attacks, disrespectful language, or disruptive behavior have no place in our board meetings. Thank you for you understand it. Karen, do we have any public comments? Yes, we do. As a reminder, public comments are limited to three minutes per speaker with a limit this evening of 30 minutes total. As a reminder, please address staff members and students by their title and not by their name to respect their privacy. Chris McCallow. My name is Dr. Chris McCullough, and as someone who works in teacher education, pre-service teacher education, principal preparation, superintendency preparation, I understand educational governance and leadership. I understand board policy. According to statute, one of the primary roles that the school board has is to direct the superintendent and to make decisions about terminating the superintendent or deciding who to hire. The reason that a public school board exists, and it's made up of community members is because of local control. The whole concept historically of the school board is so that we as a community have control of our schools. Schools. So the good news is Fenton High School is your school. Fenton High School is my school. The best part is Fenton High School is our school. <laughs> Dr. Ant on Tango, you work for us. You do not control us, and you will not be allowed to manipulate us. This is not a place where we will allow you, and I want to look right in your eyes right now, to neglect and abuse our children. I have a copy of Dr. Ontango's evaluation instruments public record. I was able to FOIA it. There's not much to it. The reason I'm holding this up and sharing it is because there are measures related to student safety and welfare. In addition to that, I want you to see that there's really not much to this. A few pages, you, anybody could say most anything and fit the criteria. This is an instrument that's used to evaluate a $230,000 a year job, and that doesn't include the substantial benefits that come with it. According to board policy 2 230, which is related to public participation, I may ask questions of the board. Responses to the questions are managed through policy 3 30, which I have these policies with me if any of you would like to see them. 
chain of command, which states all personnel should refer matters regarding or requiring administrative action to the responsible administrator, and may appeal a decision to a higher administrative officer. Since the superintendent and the principal, along with the entire board, are here, I have the following questions for you all, and I would like answers immediately. You're all together, you can answer these. Because of these guidelines and the policy, you must provide answers tonight. I know you'll know the answers to these questions. Has a hearing been scheduled at the Illinois State Board of Education concerning revocation of the professional educator's license for the teacher in the current allegations? If not, why? Has his license been suspended? Number, my next set. Did a teacher inappropriately text or get involved with a student in dance force? Was the teacher reported to ISBE so that their professional educator's license would be revoked? Was a substitute teacher banned from serving as a substitute teacher because he or she made inappropriate comments to students in class, but yet the individual continues to drive a bus for our district? Was a bus driver sexually harassed by another employee? Was money exchanged to silence the bus driver? If so, I'd really like to know from what account those funds were paid. I am sharing tonight a call for action. We'll be passing around and you'll all receive this paper. If the board members and the superintendent don't take the correct actions tonight, we must call the Regional Office of Education and email them and break their phones and bring down their servers. Yeah. Email this statement, call this number over and over. And if she fails to take action, we'll meet with her. Thank you. Gina Sokolowski. My name is Gina Sokolowski, and I'm back again. If you thought firing this staff member was going to keep us satisfied, you're mighty mistaken. You've woken the sleeping bear, being the Bensonville and Wooddale communities. When it comes to our children, we do not back down. Our biggest problem is our leadership, and that starts from the top all the way down. If anyone has ever been to an event, the spectators always ask, where are you guys from? because our energy is so big, and we stand by our kids, win or lose, it does not matter. We do not appreciate the dictatorship that is in this administration. Our kids should not be penalized for anything regarding this situation. Who should be penalized for this is all of you. Our kids suffered enough, for example, for the second year in a row, you have taken away the varsity head football coach, leaving the team without stability, structure, et cetera. What's even more astounding is the assistant superintendent slash principal didn't take into consideration the kids' feelings on this ridiculous decision. The majority of our children have gone to school together from preschool until now. During those years, they have built relationships with teachers and staff and look up to them as mentors and confidants. Now that they have come to this high school years, some have lost that trust due to this situation. And it's sad when the superintendent says to parents, and I quote, when your child becomes a bison, the administration, teachers, and staff Treat your child as if they are our own. And I end quote. Explain to me, Mr. Superintendent, how you can say this to parents, but yet you swept this under the rug for so many years, and you kept this predator walking our hallways for so many years without taking any action. With this being said, you need to go. This is tyrant behavior, and we will not stand for it. You have now unleashed the bull.
Julia Stake Prowla. Julia Stike Crawler. Good evening. Once again, I stand before you as a parent of current, current Fenton students and as a representative for the Polish speaking parents of Fenton students. I am here to express our continued disappointment, disappointment in the lack of leadership shown by our current administration and elected school board. Your callous email com communications have left a bitter taste in our mouths. We feel your continued lack of empathy and true validation of our concerns will continue until there is a comprehensive change in leadership. Our children are waiting for a reassurance that their concerns about their safety and well-being will finally be heard and addressed with outside counseling staff present and available for them. Have you, the administration or the school board, done anything to get these crisis intervention services in place? The damage to our children's trust of those in authority at Fenton will cause generational trauma that will take years to reverse. We trusted you, the administration, and the school board to take appropriate actions to preserve the best interests of our children. You have demonstrated to us with your continued silence and inaction that you have no interest in rectifying the damage done to the entire Fenton community. One thing this administration has certainly done well over the past few years is campaigning for three failed referendums. On June 28, 2022, Gilbane, Chicago made an in-kind contribu contribution of $5,000 to the Yes to Renovate and Moder Modernize Fenton Ballot in Initiative Committee for one of the mailers that flooded our mailboxes that election cycle. Who is Gil Gilbane, Chicago, you may ask? Well, <coughs> Gilbane, Chicago is the construction company that seven months ago celebrated the start of construction at Fenton Community High School this project includes various improvements throughout campus and installation of a new track and turf field. Yes, the same company that worked on the football field helped pay for the political mailers we received on our mailboxes. It makes one wonder where the board and the superintendent's uh, loyalties really lie. It will take a clean sweep of Fenton leadership to rest assured that things will not go back to the way they were. We do not want a culture of fear and silence to continue in our school, let alone our community. Valeria de Tulio. Good evening. My name is Valeria Tulio. I'm a Good evening. I'm a, my name is Valeria Tulio. I'm a sophomore at Fenton High School speaking on behalf of the student body. Tonight, we beg you to support us in the resignation of superintendent and all administrative staff who failed to protect us and ignored the evil acts of sexual abuse. I wanna highlight that students feel uncomfortable walking inside these halls now. Students are unable to function in their classes, the place they're supposed to feel safe and secure. We should be able to trust the adults who surround us for eight hours, five days a week. We should be able to trust our administration, but clearly all your doctorates in education mean nothing if you aren't protecting us. Just know that a predator was walking the same halls as we do every day. Makes not only me sick to my stomach, but the whole community sick. How is the administration able to tell me or any of, any of us that we are safe in this building for when for over 10 years all voices were silenced? If the superintendent followed mandatory reporting requirements, why did it take years to shed light on this abuse? Despite all those who failed us, I want to thank all the teachers and staff who try to speak out against this, the administration. We look up to you and admire all you all. You give us hope. Board members, you work for our community, you work for us, and you put us in an extremely inappropriate situation, hated under the rug and silenced victims' voices. We feel hurt and betrayed by our administration that ironically promotes the bison way. We urge you to do what is right and support, com support the community that elected you by, visit by finally listening to our voices. We demand the administration to do what's right and push the superintendent to resign. Thank you. Andrea Ballone. Can you hear me now? 
Members of the board, my name is Andrea Vallone. I'm a Fenton graduate, a Bensonville resident, the mother of two current and two future students, and the wife of a Fenton employee. The superintendent needs to be removed from power immediately. He and the... Please, I'm gonna barely hit three minutes here. The superintendent needs to be removed from power immediately. He and the assistant superintendent of human resources and operations have worked together to harbor a man who is a threat to the safety of their students and silence those who tried to come forward. Despite my fear for retaliation, I choose to speak today. On Sunday, September 17, 2023, a storm flooded our school. Administration didn't bother to show up that day to assess the situation and minimize the severity to the staff via email. The superintendent also failed to alert parents timely or invoke e-learning as a safety measure. My husband, a custodian at Fenton, took and sent pictures and videos of the damage to the teachers whose rooms were affected, one of which was the special education classroom. This media included areas with two plus inches of water and waterlogged carpets that could cause respiratory issues for anyone in the building. Instead of being commended for bringing this matter to light, my husband was told that using his phone to record and using his work email to send this media was a misuse of company time, resources, and equipment. Wow. Hold on. Wow. He then received a letter impending his termination, which his union fought hard to reduce to a 10-day unpaid suspension. Wow. On March 8th, 2024, our students staged a sit-in to voice their feelings about the ongoing police investigation. At a time when the superintendent and assistant superintendent of human resources and operations should have been devoting their time addressing the needs of our students, they were instead busy in their second meeting with my husband and their attorney to discuss pending termination again for one hour of wage theft. My husband's whistleblowing concerning the severity of the flood damage in September has put a target on his back, and he is still awaiting the decision regarding his termination. The administration has a pattern for silencing those with different agendas and shuts down anyone who advocates for the students and staff here. A good man and a hard worker with integrity who does the right thing has been targeted by you, and by you, and by the other administrator, while a child predator was protected and promoted under your watch. My heart aches for the victims of this administration's negligence, and I speak today only in hopes that our story helps further expose the corruption of the superintendent and his administration. This community demands justice and transparency. Board members, you can make this right. This man and his administration are not more powerful than we are. No. Get them out. Yeah. <laughs> Chanel Lewis. Good evening. My name is Dr. Sunel Lewis, and in full transparency, I am the wife of Board Chair Carrie Lewis. I come before you today with a heavy heart and deep concern regarding the treatment of our dedicated school board members. <laughs> These individuals have committed themselves to serving our children and ensuring These individuals who have committed themselves to serving our children and ensuring the best possible education of our communities of Wooddale and Bensonville at least deserve our respect and support. This is not the appropriate this is not the appropriate setting for political agendas or grandstanding. We are supposed to be focused on the seriousness of this matter 
at hand. It deeply troubles me to hear of the recent hostility and sheer insolence directed toward our school board members at, the, at last Monday's meeting. They happen to be volunteers who are challenged to make decisions that, we, that they believe are the best for our children. Why, while disagreements while disagreements and healthy debate are a natural part of community interactions, the personal attacks, yelling, booing, harassing phone calls and emails are frankly disgusting, unacceptable and should not be tolerated. You should remember that all of these individuals are our neighbors, our friends and community members and should at least be treated with dignity and civility, even if you disagree with them. Instead of resorting to hostility and ignorant behavior, we need to come together as a community to engage in constructive dialogue and find common ground. We need to recognize that they are working tirelessly with as much transparency as is allowed in a legal situation. I implore each of you, each and every one of you, to approach a dis discussion about our school in this tragic situation with empathy and understanding. I, too, am a mom who has, who, who has had children go through Fenton, and my daughter is still here. And this is concerning. Yes, it is infuriating, and yes, it is appalling. However, we need to be role models for our children in how we foster a culture of respect and collaboration where everyone's voices are heard and valued. Our students clearly illustrated how to do this on last week when they had their sit-in and civil expression of their concerns. So I kindly request that we maintain a modicum of respect this evening during this meeting despite our differences and concerns. Thank you. Zuhaidi Mendoza Garcia. Um, excuse me, just a minute. In order for everyone to be heard, we must have you not be disruptive while public comments are being made. You guys have taken the time to come out to be heard. If you will allow the people who have signed up and prepared statements, they can be heard. Thank you. All right, parents, students, Concerned community members, everybody take out your phone right now <coughs> and go ahead and set in your calendar for the next board meeting, April 24th, 7 p.m. We're all going to be here. We're not going anywhere. Nope. You're asking for respect when you guys were out here laughing at our students discussing a distressing situation. <coughs> we will not offer that same respect that you guys are asking for when you cannot offer it for the children that you serve, for the community that you serve. I hope you see all of these people out here, they want you gone. You are not trustworthy with our children. So I hope you get these emails and I hope you make the right choice and you step down and let parents who care about the situation in the school take over so that our kids can feel safe again. Thank you. Martina Collada. Hello, I am Martina, a senior attending Fenton, much like some of your children do. As community members, you grew with us and started your families here deciding this community is best for you and your dearest one's safety and development. Your value for safety expanded beyond only your closest, but, through, but to all, through the call for leadership. It was your passion for goodwill and fostering a safe and just community that led you to the very seats you are sitting in. Your, came, your call for leadership came from the heart. 
However, let me remind you of passion's greatest threat, indifference. It is an evil of its own. The indifferent one is a bystander to the injustices happening before them and takes comfort in their inertia. They allow corruption of the virtuous integrity established to guard the safety of our neighbors and the moral future of, our, of generations to come. This corruption, fostered by apathy, gives room for the worst of human nature to be actualized. And unfortunately, our community is faced with this evil. Regrettably, the voices of concerned mandated reporters had been taken with unconcern, allowing the acts of heinous sexual violence, allowing the acts of evil to be conducted under our very own roof. The administration heard their concerns, but did not listen. An indifference to voice is a pattern that has emerged. At this Monday's meeting, students, parents, community members, and teachers alike spoke in unison, demanding transparency crucial for the safety of our students. Despite students blasting our voices at protests of us speaking right before your very eyes and ears, you denied, you denied us by hiding behind a shut door. We know you heard us, but we are not listened to. Our voices will not be ignored. We, the people of this community, are unified by our, by our passion to keep our children and neighbors safe. We will ensure our path to justice will triumph and we will not allow inertia from the leaders we have appointed. If you repeat these same patterns of inaction, we, the people who elected you, will take action to throw you out of your seats and elect a new board. Our fight for righteousness, the power of our unity is un unyielding. As leaders, as members of our community, we urge you to share our passion. Feel the value within you that led to the calling of your vocation. Feel the compassion, the care for us all, and transcend the trap of a pattern of indifference. Join us in our passion for justice and take responsibility of, of rebuilding integrity. The board is not the administration, the board is its community. As the community, we demand the immediate resignation of the superintendent. Yep. Thank you. Ottavio Dottolo. Why are we censoring the speaking list? Why are names that were on the list being denied an opportunity to speak? Number two on the list, and I was denied my right to speak to the board. You want to take my spot? You want you want to take my spot? You want to take my spot? You can take my spot. Go ahead. They heard me. They heard me the other day. You guys talked about respect, right? My name is Otavio Dottolo. I was here on Monday. If you guys don't remember, my name is Otavio Dottolo. I was here on Monday. If you guys don't remember. You want to talk about respect? You got a guy laughing in the corner. This is not a laughing matter, OK? You got this guy on Monday was half asleep here. And that's why I told you guys, are you guys bothered to be here? If you are, quit and quit now, OK? This is a serious matter. A lot of people's lives have been damaged because of one person. You covered it up for nine years. You proud of yourself? You look, how, do you, how do you like looking at yourself in the mirror every morning? How do you live with yourself? Let me ask you a question. If it was your kids, how would you handle it? Would you be happy somebody? Would you be happy somebody sweeping this stuff under the rug? Yeah, that's the way it should be handled. So now I'm going to read from what I wrote. Everybody, thank you for coming, you know, supporting all this stuff with the school. This is a this is a disgusting disgusting matter and all parties involved should be fired immediately, not resign, because then you get your pension. You shouldn't get a pension for being the person that you are hiding stuff for nine years. What did you gain for hiding something for nine years? I heard you were afraid of a lawsuit. Now look at the hell you're in. Was it, was it worth your nine years of doing this? Oh, let me help my friend. Really good. Are you guys, you know, this is, this is disgusting. You guys feel, look like you guys are so, so bothered by being here. Are you guys? You know, I can ask questions. Are you guys bothered for being here? Can you guys answer? They don't want to. Yeah, they don't want to because they're afraid. 
they're afraid. I really feel sorry for the families that are involved in this stuff. And you guys should not resign. You should be terminated tonight. Goodbye. Joshua Dakins. They called me already and I didn't go. Give me one moment. My name is Ujedi Mendoza Garcia and I am a senior. My hope this year was, as a soon to be an adult, was to learn and get more of the real world experience and I did get it. Looking at the timeline, the climax of this situation ironically broke out during Women's History Month and the annual Young Women's Summit, which Michael Barago was in charge of as a reminder after his promotion, which occurred despite there already being multiple allegations over the years, Michael's Barago base salary was $118,000. Once he was put on administration leave, Barago was given his $63,000 prize to being taxed from our parents' tax money. Our parents trusted the school because they had no other option and the administration failed us. Why? I don't know. Maybe the lack of responsibility or the abundance of cowardice. Moreover, Fenton's minority population makes it remarkable as its students like myself, who are first generation or children of immigrants, have to put our trust into educated adults like Barago. We are here willing to come and learn, but how can we when our administration will not even admit they are at fault? How do we trust an administration that lacks proper security and is only, in, only embarrassing themselves and tainting the name of our school? It's humiliating having to go home and talk to my family down with students of a school full of poor administration who care about nothing except the referendum and their undeserved salaries. Yeah. You all bring shame to our community, especially for you that have children that go to this school. If I was your child, I would be ashamed to call you my parent. Debe haber un cambio, y ese cambio comienza con la renunciación de la administración. Sus propios, sus propios hijos podrían haber sido víctimas y la administración no hubiera hecho nada por ellos. Early on, I heard of the bright things Fenton has accomplished, yet I wish the same amount of effort were made in this situation. Sometimes I feel like it's far too late to, just to do that, leaving you with only one suitable option, and that is to get rid of the administrators who jeopardize the safety of our students, starting with the superintendent. There needs to be change, and that starts now with resignation. You do not represent us nor speak for us, which you aren't even speaking. You have so much power, but lack the courage and integrity to keep our schools safe. You cannot truthfully say Fenton is a safe place when the administration that was there when such acts were being allowed is still in charge. The board is a community and is a community with the mandate immediate resignation of the superintendent, James Ontango. Thank you. I don't know how you follow that, but I'm going to try. 30 years ago, when I was an undergraduate student, I decided that I wanted to give back to my community. I grew up in a community very much like Bensonville. I decided I wanted to be a police officer because I wanted to give back to my community. I went through the entire process. In my senior year of college, after spending more of my parents' money than I care to admit, and interviewing hundreds of inmates for my senior paper, the common theme there was, if someone had taken the time to talk to me and heard me, I might not be here now. If someone had taken the time to break the cycle and teach me how to do different, I might not be here now. And in that moment, I decided, that as much as I had a life ambition, of first playing for the Green Bay Packers, because I grew up in Wisconsin, <laughs> realizing that that was not going to happen, but instead to serve and protect my community, I decided in that moment I would become an educator. And for the last 20 years, I've proudly done that. The last 21, I've been a school administrator. I'm a parent of four children, 
two of which graduated from Fenton. Recently, my daughter Reagan Dakins, who's now at Marquette University, serving our country in the ROTC. I've got two more coming, my daughter Allie and my son Josh Jr. I'm so glad that Anthony, my oldest, and my daughter Reagan made it through here safely. The first call that I made, that my wife made, who's also an educator, was to make sure that this monster didn't have any opportunity to work with her as she was in the track and field and other sports. Thankfully, she didn't. As an administrator, I had a statement prepared, but I had to put that aside and as a parent, speak to the community and to our board who are also community. Sitting by and doing nothing can't continue. The action that was taken Monday is a first step but as a longtime school administrator and as a person who had at one time had ambition of being a police officer, my entire life I've known that either vocation requires trust. It is the foundation and the principle of law enforcement. It is the foundation as a school administrator and as a parent that trust has been broken and it's irreparable. The only way that healing can begin now is that this administration, starting with the superintendent and every administrator underneath him who was hired by him and promoted by him, resigns or is terminated. <laughs> bully tactics as a police officer, bully tactics as an administrator are not condoned. We will not go quiet and we expect action. Thank you for your time. Ranjana Rajan Ran? Sorry if I said your name wrong. Rajendran. 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 Good evening. My name is Ranjana Rajendran, and I am a social studies teacher and currently Fenton's SEL coordinator. This means I lead our efforts for social emotional learning. During our monthly SEL committee meeting yesterday, it became evident that the ability to help with this ongoing crisis had been marred by the past two weeks as we have awaited guidance from administration on how to heal and support our community. In light of this, we propose several immediate steps to initiate the healing process and address the underlying issues that plague our community during this challenging time. The first one, I'm amending my speech to say that should be to remove the 30 minute time limit tonight so that all of our voices can be heard. All of your voices can be heard. First, we advocate for implementing community circles for both students and staff led by outside professionals. These circles serve as safe spaces for open dialogue, particularly crucial given the strong emotions stemming from the violation of trust, not just by specific individuals, but of an institution. We are not equipped to do this on our own. I am not equipped to do this on my own. It is crucial to acknowledge that our counseling team may not be in the best position to lead these circles as they are processing their own trauma. Therefore, it is imperative to bring in outside workers to facilitate these sessions effectively so we can move forward. As a fellow survivor, navigating these crises has occupied my headspace and my time for the last five months as I relived my own trauma. Time that could have been spent developing exciting curriculum and caring for my kids. Our school has not only lost instructional and planning time, but also experienced secondary trauma. Our students and our staff are actively harmed by inaction. Second, it is imperative that any initiatives undertaken encompass the entire school community. My fellow teachers and I have heard troubling conversations over the last two weeks that demonstrate that many in our community hold survivors responsible for their assault. In our classrooms, we call this a teachable moment. And yes, Ms. Lewis, I could not agree more that we should be role models. 
An all-school assembly is an intervention suggested by our students, and we support their wisdom. These assemblies can equip both staff and students with the tools to recognize the warning signs and intervene appropriately before anyone is harmed. So much of popular culture condones sexual misconduct and silence, but we have a responsibility to our students to provide them another narrative. Finally, we need to establish effective communication channels to address rumors and anonymous tips. Fenton needs a clear flowchart with a feedback loop for addressing concerns that includes people who can contact and who will respond to restore trust and ensure follow-up on reported issues. Mr. Superintendent, I was there the day that we decided to hire you as principal. The first question that we asked had to do with what is the most important thing in a school? And your answer, and I will never forget it, was student safety. <laughs> we failed. Rebuilding trust with our students is paramount. We must actively engage with them, listen to their concerns, and demonstrate a commitment to their well-being through our actions. I attempt to do this every day in my classroom, but I am thoroughly exhausted. I'm asking you to do your part by providing the supports that teachers and students desperately need, community circles, a school-wide assembly, and transparent communication. Thank you very much for your time. Patrick Escobedo. Patrick Escobedo. <laughs> President Lewis and members of the Board of Education. My name is Patrick Escobedo. I've taught English at Fenton for 19 years, and I've been president of the Fenton Education Association for the last six. Our union is here tonight, again, in solidarity with our community, and my heart is broken. Watching the response of this board to the pain that this community is suffering, I implore you, I am begging you, please, change the way you are responding to this crisis while there is still time for healing. Administrators run tornado drills to keep kids safe from tornadoes. Administrators run fire drills to keep kids safe from fires. Administrators run active shooter drills because God forbid there is ever an active shooter. Because administrators' jobs are to keep kids safe so my colleagues and I can do our job and educate them. Your community is here because you have failed to do that. They are right to demand answers and accountability and action. They are right. They asked you perfectly rational questions on Monday. Why did the superintendent promote an individual with this pattern of allegation? Why was he allowed continued access to female students who were directed to go work with him? Why, if the district thought he shouldn't have a school-issued cell phone, was he put in charge of communication technologies and given access and oversight to our communications in the school? We are right to want those answers. It is fair to ask our leaders to be accountable and explain to us why you did what you did, because it is now hurting us, all of us. It's why we're more hurt tonight than we were on Monday. And if you continue responding like this, we're going to be more angry tomorrow than we are right now. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. I do not know if this situation can be repaired at this point. I don't know. The, the pain is so deep. You stand in the audience and you can almost feel it physically. People are that hurt by this. There is that much trauma. But I know it will never be repaired if you continue to respond in this hurtful manner. 
You are making this worse every time someone gets up and pours their heart out and is met with apathy. So you have a choice tonight. You can keep going in the direction you are headed right now. You can increase the trauma that they are experiencing and you can increase their rage. And you will never heal this community. Or you can take seriously their calls for answers, accountability, and action. It is a scarier path, let's be honest. It requires honesty, humility, and real leadership. It's not a path you can walk when you are the first person out of the room when the meeting adjourns. It's not a path you can walk by having your lawyer write prepared statements to try to placate the crowd. It's not a path you can walk if you aren't willing to look these people in the eye and admit that you have failed them. You have failed them. Until you admit it, they cannot heal. But it is the right path. If you care about student safety, it's the right path. If you care about what these people are going through, it's the right path. It's the path you were elected to walk, as hard as it is. The choice is clear. I'm asking you tonight to do the right thing for all of us. I am asking you to please do your duty to this community, to your teachers, and to your students. Thank you. Jayla Richmond. Jayla Richmond. Hello, everybody. My name is Jay. I am a senior at Fenton, and as I stand here in front of you all today, I address my concerns for Fenton Community High School and hope to be heard. After this very, very, very crazy situation that we all have been put through these past couple of weeks, not only myself and staff, but my peers de deserve peace from all of this. The one and the most important issue and concern that I would like to address is that my heart goes out to the victims. My heart goes out to all of the young girls that feel triggered or uncomfortable about this situation, all of the girls who are afraid to speak up or speak out, all of the girls that feel like their trauma or situation has been taken as a joke because of all of this, all of the people that feel like they're in the dark or being silenced, all of the students who wish they could speak out but their parents don't understand, and all of my peers that this has affected, and to all of the staff that truly had no clue about this whatsoever. To all of my young girls and boys and men that are disgusted and uncomfortable with this situation and how administration has been handle handling this, I want you to know that I feel you, I hear you, I see you, and me and so many other people are here for you. And I hope that this here, this statement right here, right now, from me and from all of us can help the students years to come and the people that come out are taken seriously immediately, not 10 years later. We need change. We need change now, and I feel like accountability needs to be taken. A public apology needs to be made. We need to have an all-school assembly to address this issue and to show that there is transparency taken from the under end, and our superintendent needs to resign. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, and thank you for coming out tonight. Any apologies, Gary? Um, James, any apologies? Next item, oh. informational. Go ahead. My name is Xochitl Quinones. 
I'm a class of 2022 alum, and I'm not going to waste time with introductions because I don't believe that this board deserves any sense of formalities from this community anymore. So just to clarify and address an earlier request from a speaker to treat this group with civility, I don't address this board with respect because I and other survivors were not treated with respect. <laughs> to the superintendent, your complicity with the terminated administrator is absolutely repulsive. You are a joke of a man. You have managed to make an absolute mockery out of every marginalized group in this room, including your own. You failed to support me and other young girls who were assaulted and groomed by a monster that you protected, empowered, and promoted as a community hero, as our hero. You looked my parents dead in the eye and told them that I was in good hands here, that their child was safe here. I wonder if anyone on this board would protect this predator if it were your own children being victimized. I hate to say it, but to all the black and brown people on this board, I and your children fit the type of that predator. He had a pattern of victims, yes. and none of you seemed to care. I wonder, specifically to the superintendent, if you realize that he could have targeted your children after seeing their photos in your office. I would never wish what I have experienced on anyone, and I pray that none of your daughters have not and do not suffer the karma from your atrocious involvement in this predator's behavior. To the board, do better. Formally acknowledge and apologize for your failures to students, staff, and families. Create space that fosters growth despite the several crimes hosted in this building. Listen to us when we are screaming to be heard. I find it appalling that my brother is expected to feel safe being here next year with the same administration that forced me to have to explain to him how dangerous it can be to meet an administrator for lunch. I hope this board is aware that there is not a myriad of options to take when it comes to responding to this. Situations like this are black and white and you listen to the community that is shouting at you for two days. You all claim to serve the community but after this <coughs> month and you should continue to employ the current superintendent, principal, and assistant superintendent, should you decide to do that, it'll be clear what community you are serving, and it is not one made for children. Our next item is informational items.
before we move to on to, um, the next. I can't hear you. I think we all agree with what he said, though. <laughs> before we met, move into the next item here, just wanted to reiterate. Being the super. Being the superintendent, every allegations that was made to the administration and our team, we followed and called DCFS and, and, and the police. We will continue to invest to make sure police is involved in all of allegations. We know that folks are upset. It's evident here. We heard you. I could, I could only reiterate that we followed and called the police for every allegation. The next item is the consent agenda uh, informational item. The first informational item is we received a FOIA from Bo Kim wanting results of the building automated system. The FOIA was resolved. That's it for the consent agenda. Our next, our next item is consent agenda. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So move. So move. Second. You need to speak up. I can't hear. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Figueroa. Yes. Rago. Yes. Cade. Yes. Kovac. Yes. Redzinski. Yes. Goodrich. Motion passed. May I have a motion that the Board of Education approve the purchase of a stadium scoreboard installation from Sievert Electric through the Sourcewell contract award number 030223DAK22624 in the amount of 81,742. Second. Second. Roll call. Figueroa. Yes. Rago. Yes. Hade. Yes. Kovac. Abstain. Radzinski. I abstain. Goodrich. Uh, just for the sign. Yes. Yes. Just for the abstain. Lewis. Motion passed. Can we please finish the uh, our business? May I have a motion that the Board of Education adopt the resolutions and notices of non-renewals and dismissals as presented? So moved. Second. Roll call. Figueroa? Yes. Rago? Yes. Hade? Yes. Kovac? Abstain. Radzinski? Abstain. Goodrich? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Motion passed. May I have a motion that the Board of Education adopt the staffing plan for school year 2024-2025 as presented? So moved. Second. Roll call. Figueroa. Yes. Rago. Yes. Hade. Hade. Kovac. Abstain. Redzinski. Abstain. Goodrich. No. Lewis. Yes. Motion passed. Does anyone have any committee reports? All right. Huh? 
May I have a motion and a second to go into closed session for the following. Five Illinois CS 120 slash two C1. The appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of Fenton Community High School District 100. B, 5 Illinois CS 120 C, C2. Collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees. There will be no further discussion of this after coming out of closed session. Roll call. Roll call. Figueroa. Yes. Rago. Yes. Hade. Yes. Kolbeck. Abstain. Radzinski. Radzinski. No. Goodrich. Good. Yes. Lewis. Yes.
just kidding. May I have a motion and a second to go back into open session? So moved. Second. Roll call. Radzinski. Kovac. Yes. Hayde. Yes. Goodrich. Yes. Figueroa. Yes. Lewis. Yes. Rago. Yes. Back in open session. May I have a motion and a second to adjourn? All in favor, aye. All in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.